Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I'm going to do a little video today talking about this little sandblasting kit that I got to go with my pressure washer. I've had a lot of interest in this, a lot of questions uh, that have come in on my last video where I just briefly showed it. Uh, so I thought I'd feature it and uh, tell you a little bit about it, tell you a little things I've learned about it as I have played around with it and really kind of fine-tuned it to make it work better. And we got a couple of pieces of cast iron over here from my planer restoration uh, that I want to get uh, restored. So first off, what is this? This is an industrial sandblast kit, again, made to go with a pressure washer. Uh, this contraption right here is pretty much what I purchased and the one that I got came from Ultimate Washer Incorporated. I purchased it off of Amazon. I will put a link uh, to this item down in the description of the video. So if you wanna click on it and see this exact model, uh, I'll take you right to it. And um, I'll tell you, it cost a little over $100. This one was a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones that I found on Amazon. Uh, but I went with this one because it had a little bit better reviews and I really liked the looks of the uh, Venturi part down here I'm going to show you in a minute. It just looked like it was a little bit uh, beefier and more heavy duty than some of the other ones uh, that I saw. So anyway, let's tell you a little bit about what it is, how it works, and we'll get out and try it out and show you how it goes. So here you can kind of see uh, what we got and really there's just, this is the main part right here and uh, this is a Venturi. I'll tell you a bit more about it in a second. It goes to a tube. This is just a suction tube. You stick this down into a bucket of sand, it, and it suction sucks it up into the up into the, the, the sandblaster head. So this part of the rig is really what does most of the work. And this is a venturi uh, that basically creates a vacuum. You've got your pressure washer tip. This just plugs right into your pressure washer. It just inserts in here. There's a zero degree um, nozzle in here. One thing that I will tell you right now is that when you purchase one of these, make sure you get one that is sized appropriately for your pressure washer. Look at your pressure that you're generating as well as your gallons per minute, and you need to match a tip for that, those specifications. And there's some charts you can find online. Basically, there's a different size orifice in these. So it's just it's the size of the hole, and it needs to be sized for your pressure washer or it will not work correctly. And a lot of people who have had bad luck with these, it's mainly because they don't have the right orifice in that particular uh, nozzle right there. But basically what happens, and just like any Venturi, you have uh, a, a fluid that's coming through here at high pressure. Uh, you got a hose coming off the side that creates a vacuum. This goes in, basically just sucks sand in. You got a mixing chamber here and then a tip, and then the water and the sand together come out the tip under high pressure and you're basically sandblasting using your pressure washer as a uh, medium to carry the sand as opposed to air uh, in a typical sandblasting application. So before we go out and give it a try, just a couple of comments and a couple of things that I've learned. But first off, why am I interested in this setup? Why not just go get a professional sandblasting kit and uh, just do traditional sandblasting? In my situation, the main reason is, is cost. Uh, getting a professional grade pressure pot sandblasting outfit is really expensive. Uh, you're gonna have to invest quite a bit of money in that setup. And, you're not, and not only once you get that, once you get just the, the, the sandblasting kit, you've gotta have an air compressor that's capable of generating enough uh, volume of air to really make it work properly, which is a really, big, powerful air compressor, which I really don't have in my shop right now. And then on top of that, you got to have all kinds of uh, personal protective equipment. To really do it right, you need to have one of the, the helmets and the mask and everything that's pumping air in there to you because you can get silicosis from breathing uh, the sand, uh, the dust in the sand. So you have to be on a, on a um, really to do it right, you need to have that, that set up. Cost a lot of money. This setup here, about a hundred bucks. Now I will tell you right now that as far as speed and as far as the, the sandblasting job that you can do with this, it's not as fast, it's not as aggressive as a commercial sandblasting setup. 
but for my application, I think it's actually going to be a little bit better. Uh, and mainly because it's not quite as aggressive. I tend to want to be a little bit more gentle on my parts uh, because a lot of times, particularly I do a lot of blasting and cast iron, a lot of times there will be filler in this cast iron where there's a uh, little pockets and voids and inclusions in the cast iron, they'll put a filler material in there. With traditional sandblast, man, you just blast that stuff right out. This setup here is a little bit slower and uh, it does, it's not quite as aggressive and I have not been blasting out all that filler material, which really saves me more time down the road. So it's not all about speed. Um, also, the amount of sand that this uses is a little bit less than what you would use in a, a commercial grade sandblaster. Uh, I was working on my big uh, planer machine, my big metal planer, huge casting, and I used about 100 pounds of sand, which sounds like a lot, but that's just two bags of sand to do that. So, you know, if, in my setup, it really works for me pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, for, the, for the price, I'm real happy with it. So with that, um, let's get out here and, and try it out. So a little bit about the media that we're using. This is a, just a bucket. I've got my sand in here. Uh, this is the probe. We just stick it down in the bottom and that sucks out of the bottom of that bucket and does a good job. Now, when I first started, I was using this Quickcrete all-purpose sand. I picked it up at my local Lowe's and honestly, guys, it didn't work very well. It was just too fine. Uh, so doing some research, I switched over to this uh, pool filter sand also made by Quickcrete and this stuff here really does a trick. It's a little bit coarser sand. It's got some sharper corners on it and it just takes the stuff off really well. So, you know, this bag of sand here was about three and a half bucks a bag. Bag. This sand was about seven or eight bucks a bag, a little bit more money, but well worth it. Really uh, happy with how this is working. So a couple other little things before we get started. First off, uh, you want to keep this hose pointed up on this uh, piece here. If you let it get down up underneath the bottom, you can actually have some water run back down the tube, which will clog things up. You need dry sand until it gets right in here to the mixing chamber. So I just take some duct tape and duct tape my pipe back here, and that tends to kind of keep it up in the general up position, which really helps uh, keep that water out of there. Also, protect, uh, personal protective equipment. You know, I got on rubber boots rain jacket here and a face shield. The face shield probably being the most important part of this whole thing. You are going to make a mess. You're going to have sand coming back at you in your face. So uh, at least protect your face and keep that out of there. Hopefully, uh, because we're mixing this with water, we're not getting that, that sand dust, that silica dust that really kind of makes sandblasting dangerous. We're encapsulating that in the water, so it really makes us a lot safer. Uh, but it's probably still a good thing to at least wear a dust mask while you're doing this, just to make sure you're not breathing any silica dust uh, to keep that out of your lungs, because that can be bad. Let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and we'll show you how it works. All right, so you want to come in here and just start blasting away. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds for the sand to really kind of get up in there and start blasting. But once it does, it starts stripping the stuff off pretty well. All right, we got some sand flowing now. Let's uh, get in here and start doing some blasting. It's uh, taking it down to the bare metal. Like I said, it's not super fast, but it gets it done and it conserves the sand at the same time. So uh, I really like that combination. brought that casting in the shops outside that bright sunlight so maybe you can see a little bit better. It's still a little bit wet right now and uh, so it's 
going to lighten up a little bit, but also I, I know from past experience, uh, I'm already seeing a little bit of the flash rust starting to come up on there. So it's such a clean surface that you get that little bloom of rust on it pretty quickly. And what I've been doing is I'm just letting it dry down real well. And then I'm just hitting it lightly with a wire wheel to knock that off. And then I'll hit it with some primer and then paint it. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the results. Again, it's not, maybe not quite to the same level as a commercial you know, air assist sandblasting setup. But for my application, not being as aggressive is actually a good thing. And uh, you know, I'm not worried about being in too big of a hurry either. So for the price, it's a good deal. It's a real good deal. And to give you an idea of what I've done with it so far is I've been cleaning up this, uh, these castings here. This is for a big uh, metal planer. It's a machine that I'm in the process of restoring right now. This is the kind of stuff I'm usually needing to clean up is, is big chunks of cast iron. And uh, again, without getting too aggressive. So uh, uh, it's, it's, I think it's gonna work good for me. I've probably used maybe 200 pounds of sand all together, including what we just used on those uh, legs over there. And I've still got some sand out there in the bucket right now. So, uh, you know, it, it's not using up too terribly much sand. It's doing a good job. Uh, this has already been sandblasted and uh, primed and painted for the most part. Uh, one thing I did do is on my machine surfaces, I covered those with duct tape uh, before I blast them because I don't want to, uh, take any material off of these precision, uh, this, in this case, plain surfaces. I uh, wanted to keep those original. So we just covered them with duct tape and uh, it does pretty good. If you get the blaster right up under the edge, it will pop it off. But if you kind of try to stay away from those uh, duct tape areas, uh, it will do a good job of protecting it. And that's worked good for me. So with that, that's pretty much gonna be a wrap on this. Just wanted to give you guys a quick look at this sandblasting setup. Again, I have a link to the Amazon page where I purchased mine from down in the comments of the video. So if you up under the bottom where all the words and stuff are down in there, there's a link that you can go to and see the exact one I've got. And uh, you can look at other ones. They have other models on there. I like mine because it is a little bit heavier duty, more commercial grade uh, than some of the other ones that were on there. Uh, but all in all, it's working for me. I'm happy with it. It's again, not commercial sandblasting, but for, you know, I already had the pressure washer. So for 110, 115 bucks, it was a good investment, I think. And it's gonna do well for the uh, amount of work that I'm gonna use it for. That's it guys. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're doing a complete restoration project right now on this metal planer. You can follow along with that project. Uh, if you like, and it got lots of other projects that I've done back in the past, and we'll be doing more in the future, all kinds of restoration work over at vintagemachinery.org. And um, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.